Okie doke, let's fix up our shop widget a little bit. So, I'm going to go into my shop widget, the main, the main one. And I'm going to go to my shop inventory grid because I want to add a little bit of space between the buttons so that we can add in our, the price underneath it. So right about here we're going to have the price of an item or in this instance how much you'll get for selling it. So inside the main shop widget I'm going to highlight my shop inventory grid first and right over here in the child layout this is what will determine how the buttons are proportioned out. So for the minimum desired slot width I'm going to set that to 75. I'm going to set that to 25. And for the minimum slot desired height, I'm going to set that to 100. So now when I run back in here, you'll see now it's got a little bit of space in between. You can increase that height in order to put more space if you want to. So just to give you a drastic example, if I set this to like 250, then when I run back over to my shopkeeper, see it's a huge difference. We don't need nothing like that, but that's just to illustrate the point. So I'm going to set uh, 125 maybe. You can kind of play around with it, figure out what you like. That's too much. So I'm going to do 110, and that's good for now. So now in the shop icon, I want to add a text to the canvas panel that I'm just going to drag. Hmm. Can't I detach it from the canvas panel? Oh well, it's going to be right underneath it. And I'm going to just put three zeros in there, justify it to the center, and then shrink it up to fit that. But I'm also going to adjust the font real quick, so I'm going to set it to be about 15. Shrink that up a little bit. That. Oh yeah, we can do that. That'll work. Hey, that keeps it from... Yeah, so what I've done, this is actually the top of that widget. So you'll see I can do like that. But you can basically shrink it down and then that way it doesn't throw off our uh, positioning of the thing. So now for the text, I don't want that to be bold. I'm going to set that to light. So that's going to be our price so I'm going to highlight it over here set that it is a variable and this is going to be this is a sale icon so price compile that and then inside the graph up here at the top we can drag out our price text and we will set the text with that parentheses text parenthetical I don't know if that's actually a word but I like it and we'll just hook the price up just like that. Now in the sales icon, we're going to do the same thing. Oh, after I adjust my sales grid. So what was it? 25 and 110. So I'm going to make sure it matches up to the other one. Then in my sales icon widget, add a text to the canvas panel. Set its font size to 15 and its typeface to light. Three zeros and center justification. And then just kind of size it appropriately. And then move it down. Now to get this one, same thing. We're going to rename it. This one's going to be called value. And it is also a variable. So that in our construction script, yeah, our cons construction script, we can grab that out, get it, and then we want to set the text 
to its value. So we know how much we'll get for the items we're trying to sell. So let's hop in and take a look and see how that turned out. So now these are worth 35 and 50 and then these are all worth zero because there's nothing there. So let me So yeah, now you can see how much you'll get for each thing. So I'm going to get 100 when I sell that shield. 125. 75. That. I'm going to buy $350. It's highway robbery. It's not like I set that price myself. Alright, and then... So yeah, that's looking good. So another tweak that we can do... Uh, just to show you, I'm not going to do this in mine. Like, I'm just going to show you all how to do it, and then I'm going to basically delete it from mine. Uh, but if you want, like, to have a, a shop camera, like a camera that zooms in on the shopkeeper and gives it a little bit more, you know, that kind of feel. If we open up the shopkeep blueprint, go into the viewport, and we can add a component of a camera. This first one, the camera right here and then move it into the place that you want which you will have to probably you know fiddle with it around and see so let's see that looks right compile that and then in your event graph when you're opening and closing the shop what you'll do is you will just get your player controller and from there you want to set view target with blend this will let you blend between cameras in the world like even if it's on a blueprint so I'm gonna drag out the camera and hook it oh what are you doing compile maybe camera component is not oh right, 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 right. okay you don't actually grab the camera you just drag off and you want a reference to self so it references the blueprint and then gets the camera attached to the self that's my bad now for the blend time, this is how fast it'll snap from your camera to the next camera. So I'm going to set this to be about 0.25 so that it zooms in pretty quick. And then just to show you how that's going to look. So when I run up and I'm talking to my... Oh, hey, I'm going to get her out of the camera. <laughs> uh, so then this is how it'll look when I'm buying stuff. So if I buy that, and I buy that shield. That's good. Oh, but if I close it, then she doesn't resume the camera, or revert the camera. So if we go back into the shopkeep blueprint, what we can do is we can just copy these two right here. Control C and Control V. Hook it up to the top. Whoa. And then for the view target, we just want to get the player pawn. Just like that. So now when I run up, talk to her, buy the starter gear that I need, and then it goes back. Now, something that you can do, just because it's a little weird that the cam the camera clips through the player. Uh, if you wanted to, you could cast to the player like so. Probably would be easier to do this part on construct, but I'm just going to do it here just to show you. I'm going to get my player character, and then I'm going to set the visibility or set actor hidden in game so since I hooked this up on the top where you would be undoing the shop I'm gonna leave it like that because this boolean right here is gonna be whether or not she's um, hidden or not so this would be mean like you can see her so I'll control C control V paste it down here and then set that she will be hidden So now if I run up, 
even if I'm right up there. I open my shop. Just like that. Oh yeah, one more thing. So right now, you can't see me running away, but you see how that little interact icon disappears? That means my character's now out of range and unable to actually interact. Uh, shout out to Wild Rose for doing this one. Um, what we want to do is we want to get our sphere collision on the blueprint of the shopkeeper, and we want to do an, an end overlap event. So... With that selected, all these green event icons pop up. Get the on end overlap. And we want to do a branch. See if the shop is open. And if it is, then we want to see if it's the player that just disappeared. So we'll cast to the player. So if the shop is open, we'll cast to the player on the ending overlap. And then we will call a custom event that we're going to set up right now. Custom event. I'm just going to call it check. Plug that in right there. And then call it right here. So what this will do is when the player ends overlap, if they have the shop open, then it will just run through everything needed to uh, close the shop and put the camera back. So right now, I'm at my shopkeeper. I do my shopping, get my sword, get my shield, run away, and then as soon as I'm out of range of her, it closes. So you can kind of fiddle with the camera, uh, wherever you like to place it, however fast you like for it to move, etc. But just some quick updates for our shop system. And in the next one, we will start setting up our magic teacher in kind of a similar fashion. So we won't have a sales, like we're not going to sell spells to him, but we'll be able to learn spells from him. So, alright, I will see y'all in the next one. Bye-bye.